So for these notes, we're going to talk about uh, lipids and nucleic acids. So this is part two of our macromolecule notes. The first we're going to talk about is lipids. And remember that lipids are fats, oils, waxes, and steroids. Um, they make up a class of molecules that have a particular chemical makeup. You don't need to write that down. The primary ingredients are carbon and hydrogen. Um, there are more carbon-carbon bonds in a carbohydrate, which has more carbon-hydrogen bonds. You'll be able to see that later. And lipids are not soluble in water. So the only thing you probably need to write down on this slide is that lipids are not soluble in water. So lipids are fats, right, and um, water, and those two things do not mix, like oil and water. Okay, so lipids are not soluble in water. So the roles of lipids are vast. Um, they are in cell membranes. Um, they're called phospholipids in the cell membrane. Um, they provide the body's largest source of potential energy. So you've, we've talked about how there's diets that say don't eat any carbs. And the reason for that is that if your body doesn't have any carbohydrates as a source of energy, it'll start to burn fat as a source of energy. So not the best diet for your metabolism or your own health. Uh, but a way to lose weight nonetheless. Um, it can be found as protective layers um, on leaves and um, other plants for a protective outer layer. Um, it serves as a cushion for our vital organs and, and other animals. Um, it can provide insulation for extreme temperatures, and it produces um, another form of lipid is uh, steroid hormones that we've talked about as well. Uh, this is new information, so I would recommend that you write this down. Uh, phospholipids um, is the type of lipid, so there's our lipid, um, that makes up cell membranes. They form a protective coating um, around the cell and controls what goes in and out of the cell. And so the function of the phospholipid is to control what enters and leaves the cell. And so if you look at this diagram right here, diagram 1, It'll show you what's called a bilayer. So bi meaning two, and so we have two layers of phospholipids. Um, so here's one layer and here's another layer. Uh, the phospholipids are orientated in a specific way, and so you can see that the red heads of the phospholipids are facing outward, and then the blue tails are facing inward. And that's because they um, are hydrophobic, and hydrophilic. And so the heads of the phospholipid are hydrophilic, which means they are water loving or water liking. Um, and so they are in facing um, the inside of the cell. If this is inside and this is the outside of the cell, then the hydrophilic heads are exposed to the water because there's water inside the cell and there's water outside of the cell. So the hydrophilic, the water-liking part of the phospholipid, um, is exposed to the water. And then inside are the tails. And the tails are hydrophobic. Um, and so hydrophobic means water-fearing or hating. And so they are protected from the water by the hydrophilic or water loving heads. And they always will orientate themselves in this way. They just do it automatically and they form this bilayer um, of phospholipids. Okay, so you need to know what hydrophilic is, what hydrophobic is, and which part of the phospholipid is hydrophobic and which part is hydrophilic. We've talked about lipids being in their own kind of group because they are not polymers. Um, they are made up of this glycerol backbone and then the fatty acid tails. So inside this backbone is glycerol. And then the fatty acid tails. And we've talked about how these fatty acid tails can be saturated or unsaturated. Um, and so if you don't know this, you should write it. If you do know it, then you don't need to. Um, on this slide, this is just giving you a chemical um, 
representation of uh, the glycerol backbone right here, and then our fatty acid tails. Um, and we've talked about how polymers are formed by condensation or dehydration reactions. Um, glycerol is also formed in that same way. You can see here how we have an OH from the fatty acid tail connecting with the H, and so this is going to produce H2O, and so um, we are, have the same type of reaction uh, forming the, glyc uh, the, fat, uh, the lipid um, that is found when um, polymers are formed, but the, the result is different. So lipids are not polymers, even though they're formed by the same type of reaction. So this is just showing you um, a different picture, nothing for you to write down on this one, but um, you can see that here's a water molecule. This is kind of cool, a little lightsaber thing. Uh, here's another water molecule, and here's a third water molecule, and those will all be removed in the condensation or dehydration reactions, leaving the fatty acid chains able to bond to the glycerin backbone. Uh, we talked about what makes a lipid saturated versus unsaturated. And so in a saturated fatty acid, there's only single bonds. So if you don't know that, you should write that. Um, and they're going to be solids at room temperature. So your animal fats are going to be um, saturated fats. And so these are not healthy for you. Um, these are more unhealthy um, than the, the unsaturated fats. So for unsaturated fats, that means that there's at least one double or triple bond um, in the fatty acid tail. Um, if there's more than one, it's said to be polyunsaturated, so we're getting lots of use out of these prefixes. Um, and they're going to be liquid at room temperature, and these tend to be a little bit healthier for you. Again, they're fats, so you don't want to consume a lot of them, but if you had to choose between um, a slab of butter or some olive oil, definitely olive oil, the unsaturated fat, would be more healthy. Um, nothing for you to write down on this slide. Um, you can see that here we have our saturated fat, all single bonds. This is a monounsaturated because it only has the one double bond. This is polyunsaturated because it has two double bonds. This slide is just giving you a chemical picture of what a monounsaturated uh, fatty acid tail would look like. Um, so nothing for you to write down, but um, just showing you the difference between this would be a saturated fatty acid tail um, and this one is a monounsaturated fatty acid. Another class of lipids would be waxes and steroids. Um, waxes make things waterproof, um, and you can find this on leaves. Um, you can find this in your ears, um, and so it provides a protective outer coating, a coating for surface layers. Uh, we talked about steroids. Um, they are a product of cholesterol, so they are fat soluble hormone, which means that that they can be dissolved in other fats, which means that in terms of a cell, a cell is surrounded by a layer of phospholipids, which are fats, and so steroids are fat soluble, meaning they can go in and out of the cell without being um, regulated, really just according to a concentration gradient. This is just showing you that layer of wax um, on the outside of a leaf. This is why the water will beat up on a leaf when it rains. So this slide is just showing you the different examples of different um, steroids. Okay, so testosterone, cortisone, uh, different vitamins, cholesterol. Um, and so it's, it's necessary that we have um, these in our bodies and that they're able to be metabolized by our bodies. Okay, so even though we've, we've talked about them in a negative way, they're also very positive and our bodies can't function properly without them. Um, cholesterol itself has a bad rap. I think we hear about ha um, 
cholesterol buildup and plaque buildup and how it's bad. Um, but it's a naturally occurring lipid found in animals, and our body needs this. It's actually found in our cell membranes. So if these are our membranes um, inside of our phospholipid bilayer, you'll often find cholesterol. And what it does is it, is it prevents those tails from tangling with each other, and it gives that cell membrane a little bit of structure. And so cholesterol is good. Um, what happens is that the cholesterol that's not made from our bodies naturally, um, the cholesterol that we eat, is what causes our health issues. And so your body makes cholesterol, but another source is from our food. Um, so too much cholesterol can lead to heart disease, high blood pressure, heart attacks, and strokes. Um, so it's important that you're mindful of what you eat. Okay, Now you're starting to learn the chemistry and um, the biophysics of what happens inside your body um, when you eat certain foods. And so it's important that um, we keep ourselves healthy and so we have these nice clear arteries versus a blocked artery because we ate too much cholesterol. So just a summary of lipids, it's a stored energy. It's a primary component of cell membranes. That's new, so you should have that in your notes. We know that it's made up of glycerol and fatty acid chains. We know it could be saturated or unsaturated. Um, a function is that it's internal and external protection. And that fat-soluble hormones such as steroids are able to pass in and out of the cell uh, due to concentration gradients because the phospholipid bilayer itself is a fat. And so if it's fat-soluble, that means it can dissolve in fat. Uh, quickly with nucleic acids, uh, we know that nucleic acids are um, polymers, and so they have a monomer, and the monomer is called the nucleotide. The nucleotide itself has a sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitro nitrogen base, so you need to know the three parts of that nucleotide. We know that DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, RNA is ribonucleic acid, and here we have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, which are pretty standard in these macromolecules. We have nitrogen, which we saw in proteins, and now we have phosphorus from this phosphate group, all um, involved in nucleic acids. Again, you don't need to write down redundant information. If you know it, don't write it. So this is just a picture of a nucleotide. We've looked at the uh, models of DNA, and I've showed you this. So we have our phosphate group, we have our sugar, and then we have our nitrogen base. And this is the important part. This is the part that changes. Um, that there are four of them. There's thymine, adenine, and then guanine bonds with cytosine. Um, and that those are in DNA. Um, and then in RNA, we have U and A, G and C. So this side, again, just shows you the difference between um, these two uh, polymers of nucleic acids. So this is your DNA, and that's your RNA. The roles of these we've talked about in class quite a bit. So DNA, the role of DNA is to contain that genetic information, or the genes. It determines how organisms will grow and develop. RNA, RNA is our worker. So if DNA is the blueprint, it holds the, the information. The RNA is the worker. And so this is the part where things get done. And so RNA takes that information from the DNA out into the cytoplasm of the cell and makes proteins. That's called protein synthesis. Um, so it determines what amino acids need to be pulled or come together and um, therefore what protein will be produced. So these next couple slides, um, you should go through and try to answer these questions. Uh, what are the monomers of carbohydrates? What are the monomers of proteins? What are the monomers of nucleic acids? What's the backbone of lipids? Uh, what attaches to this backbone? And how do you know if it's saturated or not? And so you need to go through and answer these questions. Summary of carbohydrates. Again, you don't need to write this down. You already have it. But you should take the time to read through these slides. Summary of lipids, and finally the summary of nucleic acids. These summaries are not by any means all you need to know about each one of these macromolecules. 
um, but more of a guideline for information.